all hell is breaking loose, I think, at this point. So let's just tidy it all up and figure out what we've actually got here. What is going on? Today we're doing something, I'm going to say it's pretty crazy. We're going to take a number to the power of a matrix. So we want to calculate the number E, in fact, is a special number. And we're going to take it to the power of a matrix A. And we want to try and make sense of that, see if we can come up with a mathematical definition, and then do put in a particular choice of A and get a really nice result. So the trick to this is thinking about the exponential function, E to the power X, where E is just our number, 2.718, etc. We can write this as 1 plus X plus X squared over 2 factorial plus X cubed over 3 factorial. So this is just the series expansion of the exponential function. We've seen this before many times. We have seen this. I, I like to talk about this. I like it. It's one of my favourite numbers. What we want to do is say, well, what if X was a matrix? So I'm going to write it as E to the A, where A is a matrix. Well, the first thing we can do is try to use this definition. So we need to know what is 1 for a matrix. So we'll come to that in a minute. I'm going to call it I because we have something called the identity matrix, which I will explain. And then we're going to have, this is the thing to the power one. So that would be A. Then we have thing squared over two factorial. So let's just plug in our matrix like this, because we can just compute powers of our matrix. So we're adding together an infinite number of matrices, and we have to worry about, does that make sense? But provided we can figure out how to compute powers of a matrix, maybe we can make sense of it using this series definition. So, powers of a matrix. So a matrix is kind of like a vector, but instead of just having entries horizontally or vertically, it kind of has both. So it's like a two-dimensional vector. It's one way to think about it. So the simplest matrix would be a two by two matrix, which has these four entries, A, B, C, D. And if we wanted to calculate A squared, that means the matrix A multiplied by itself, just like two squared is two multiplied by itself. Same thing for the matrix. So then to compute this, we actually just need to now follow the rules about matrix multiplication. So there's a set of rules telling us how to do this, which I will very briefly uh, sort of cover as I do the calculation. So because we're multiplying a two by two matrix by a two by two, the answer will be a two by two. Again, that's what rules of matrices tell us. So we know we're going to get a two by two matrix. And now the first entry here, this is the first row and the first column of my answer. And I get that by multiplying the first row by the first column. So that's going to be A times itself plus B times C. So that's following the rules of matrix multiplication. So A squared plus BC. Then we've got first row, second column, AB plus BD. Second row, first column, so CA plus DC. And finally, second row, second column, CB plus D squared. So this would be A squared. So we just follow the rules of matrix multiplication to compute this. And then for a cubed, we would put another a here. We do the same again. So we, we can make sense of this. It's, it's just you multiply out several matrices together. It's important we're not taking the numbers inside to the power squared. It's different. This is not a squared, b squared, c squared, d squared. Right? That would be a completely different rule. We're going to follow the standard rule of matrix multiplication. Now, I mentioned this thing here, identity matrix, which is playing the role of one. So when I have a matrix A and I multiply it by an identity matrix, I want to get back A. So I need this to be true. I need A, B, C, D multiplied by something to give me A, B, C, D. And you can do the algebra, but I'll just write it out. That's going to be our identity matrix because now first row, first column is A times one plus B times zero. So it's just A. That one times that one gives me B. That one times that one gives me C. That one times that one gives me D. So it works. So it plays the role A times the identity gives me back A. So this matrix, and if this was bigger, it's just ones all the way down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So that's our identity matrix, just plays this role of one in our formula. So now, in theory, we've kind of made sense of this, possibly. We, we don't know what this series is going to look like. It's going, you know, to infinity. There's all these bits to add together. But we have some kind of sensible mathematical definition. So let's try and use this to compute e to the power of a specific matrix. A equals zero minus omega, omega, and zero. This, of course, looks like a W, but I'm calling it omega because it's a clue at where we're going with this. So 
And what we want to calculate is e to the power of a, and I'm actually going to just add in time t. So that's just variable, but it's e to the power of this matrix. Quite a ridiculous thing to look at written down. So I said, it's possibly you can think this is a bit crazy. e, a number, 2.718 to the power of a matrix. Now we're going to make sense of this using our series expansion we had over here. We need to know powers of A. So we know what the identity matrix is. We know what A is, but we need to think about what's going to happen for powers of A. So let's compute A squared. We follow the exact same rules of matrix multiplication. First row, first column gives me minus omega squared. First row, second column, zero. That's zero. Second row, first column, that's also zero. And then that one, that one is minus omega squared. And now we can hopefully spot, if we look at this compared to our identity matrix here. So remember this was equal to i. This whole matrix is just minus omega squared times 1, 0, 0, 1. Because when you take out a factor of a matrix, you just multiply everything in the matrix by that factor. So this is minus omega squared i. And this is really helpful because we're going to now see that when we take higher and higher powers of a, we're hopefully going to get a bit of a pattern to allow us to really figure out what's happening. So we've got a, we've got a squared. So a cubed is just a times a squared. So that's minus omega squared i, that's a squared, multiplied by another a. Now the identity matrix multiplied by matrix just gives us the same matrix back. So this is just minus omega squared a. Then for a to the power four, same idea, it's a cubed multiplied by a. So it's minus omega squared times a times another a. But a squared is minus omega squared times the identity. So this is minus omega squared times minus omega squared i. So it becomes a plus, that's omega to the fourth times the identity. And the pattern will continue. So a to the five is then just omega to the four a. a to the six is a squared times this, which is minus omega squared times that. So that's minus omega to the six times i. And then we just carry on working our way through. So what we're seeing is it swaps between i to a to i to a to i to a. And we've got these kind of powers of two. So it was omega squared, omega squared. Then it was omega four, omega four. Then it was omega six, omega six. So, so just to sort of take stock of what we've got, we've got, we start with a, which is zero minus omega, omega zero. Then we got the a squared here was minus omega squared i. a cubed was minus omega squared a. a to the four was omega four i a to the 5 was omega 4a, a to the 6 was minus omega 6i. So a squared has got an omega squared, a cubed also has an omega squared, but now we have an a as well. Then we go a to the 4 has an omega to the 4, a to the 5 is an omega to the 4 but with an a, and then we go back a to the 6 is an omega to the 6. And we've also got minus minus plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus plus plus. So there is a pattern, it's not super obvious to see. But when we now plug this into our full formula, the pattern does become clearer. So what we have is e to the at is equal to i plus at. So just because we've got this t in, it's important to remember that. So write this out, cubed plus a cubed, t cubed, three factorial plus a4, t4, four factorial. And then we've got our list of powers of a. So let's plug those in. So we've got i plus a t plus a squared is minus omega squared i. So this is now minus omega squared with the t squared over 2 factorial times i. Then a cubed is minus omega squared a. So that's minus omega squared a t cubed 3 factorial. a to the fourth is omega to the fourth plus omega to the fourth i. And the pattern will continue. If you look, we've got i, a, i, a, i, a. So we're interested in the matrix part because these other things are just like terms. They're just like variables, they're numbers, but we're interested in the matrix bit. So we've got some terms multiplying i and some terms multiplying just an a. And as we've seen over here, it just swaps between i and a. So there's no higher powers of a. So if we group everything together, we've got i times one minus omega squared t squared 2 factorial plus omega 4 t to the 4 4 factorial and then the next one would be minus omega 6 t to the 6 or 6 factorial etc 
and then we've got plus a, we've got t, then we've got minus omega squared t cubed t factorial. Then the next one would be, in, here would be a plus omega to the fourth t to the five over five factorial, and that would carry on as well. So we factored out the matrices. Now this first bracket, this first square bracket, hopefully is familiar to some of you, because this, and I've talked about this one before, when we were looking at Euler's formula, this is the infinite expansion of cos. This is cos of omega t, because it's the even powers. It's, if your omega t is your term, it's an even power divided by the power factorial plus even power and the sign alternates plus or minus. So this is exactly cos. Now this one, it doesn't quite work because we've got omega squared t cubed, omega 4 t5, but we look back at a because a, remember, is zero minus omega, omega zero. So that missing omega comes from a. So we can say that a is equal to omega outside the matrix, zero minus one, one zero. So now I can, if I replace this a here, um, what's the best way to do this? Let's cross that out and say that zero minus one, one zero, and put the omega in here, omega cubed to the five. And now this one is cos's best friend this is sine of omega t because it's the odd powers, omega t to the one, omega t to the cubed, omega t to the five. So this, so now we're getting somewhere. We've got a number e to the power of a matrix is equal to some matrices multiplied by cos and sine. It's all hell is breaking loose, I think, at this point. So let's just tidy it all up and figure out what we've actually got here, what is going on. And I'm going to need more paper for that. Of course. <laughs> So now let's just take stock of everything. So we've got that e to the a t, which remember was e to the zero minus omega, omega zero, as we had i, which is one zero zero one, multiplied by cos of omega t. And then we did this, we factored out this omega from a, and we were left with this matrix. So now plus, which doesn't have a nice name, that matrix times sine of omega t. And now what we can do is we can actually multiply this inside the matrix just like we did before when we factored out the omega. So I've got a cos omega t here, then obviously zero, zero, cos omega t, plus zero, minus sine omega t. Down here I've got sine omega t, and down here I've got zero. And now we can add them using the rules of matrices. When you add matrices, you just add the corresponding positions. So the final answer is that e to the power of this matrix is a matrix with the entries cos omega t, minus sine omega t over sine omega t uh, and that's going to be cos omega t. So we have that pretty magical equation if you ask me. We've taken a number to the power of a matrix and it's just cos and sine in the entries in a matrix. So not only have we made sense of number to the power of a matrix, we've shown it can give us a matrix, we've actually got cos and sine in there by picking a clever choice of matrix in the first place. What was the job of the t? Right, so the t comes into the, this last part, which is the really nice bit, because we can link back this entire calculation we've done in matrices, so in algebra or linear algebra. We can now link this back to calculus. And this is the magic, and this is where the T is really important. So what we do is if you define this matrix here, let's call it Z. So this is my matrix Z, and this is a function of time because there's a T in there. So I can now differentiate this matrix. So dz by dt, we just differentiate each term in the matrix. So when you differentiate cos, you get minus sine, but then from the chain rule, you get an omega. So it's minus omega sine omega t. That's the derivative, that function. Minus sine, differentiate sine, you get cos. So that gives you a minus, you get an omega from inside, and you get a cos. Differentiate sine, you get cos with an omega outside and then differentiate cos, you get minus sine. But again, the omega. So if we differentiate, if this is z, we can differentiate the matrix. Now, we can also rewrite this matrix, zero minus omega, omega zero, multiplied by this matrix up here. First row, first column is zero times cos minus omega sine. Then it's, let's say, first row, second column is zero times the sine minus omega cos. And you can check the other two. 
So this is like a factorization. So if you now take stock of what we've got here, we've actually got that dz by dt, the derivative of this matrix, is equal to our matrix A multiplied by z, what we differentiated. Now, if you've done some basic calculus, this is one of the first equations you study. You study the derivative of a function is equal to a constant times the function. And the solution to this, if, if, if you treat A and Z as not being matrices for a second, the solution is Z equals E to the AT for numbers. And what we've shown here, this is exactly what we've got written. We've got E to the AT equals Z. Z equals E to the AT. So not only have we made sense of a number to the power of a matrix, we've actually done calculus involving matrices when calculating this. And that was why we needed the T, because it has this neat link back to, um, to calculus. Now, if you didn't have the T, everything we did would still actually follow through. You just would have here, this would be cos of omega and sine of omega in here. But I really like the fact that you take all this stuff we've been doing with matrices and numbers, turns out it's actually calculus all hidden in there. And not only can we do a number to a matrix, we've actually solved a differential equation. We differentiated a matrix and solved a matrix differential equation. The doubt it is that it has lots of the properties that ordinary multiplication has, but one property it doesn't have is that if you take matrices in the other order, you don't get the same answer. They don't commute. That's because we use the rows of this matrix and the columns of that matrix, so it's obvious that there's no reason why they should commute, and in fact, they don't.